2023 was a year full of embracing our clean girl, no makeup, makeup looks, laminating and tinting lots of things, mascara that rips right off, lots of other crazy hacks, and so much more that we're about to unpack. So sit down with me and let's dive into some of the top trends and products from the year. The first product that I'm gonna be diving into is the Super Goop Sunscreen. So I love that this year we've been prioritizing, protecting our skin, we're applying our SPF, and dewy, glowy skin was really a big highlight of the year. I can see why this sunscreen was so popular on TikTok. This is SPF 40, but it applies like literally like a moisturizer or a primer. It's so smooth. The next product we're going in with is a primer. So if you've been on the internet at all, you know that the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer went mega viral. And I've seen videos of people literally putting this on their face and then sticking a bunch of stuff to their face. So I would say it's pretty sticky. Um. <laughs> Now also while we're prepping and getting ready for our makeup routine, the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, I have been seeing literally all over TikTok this entire year. So this lip mask gives like a plumping effect and almost makes it look like you have lip filler. And also another big popular moment that was going on this year is just being tan, which I naturally am not good at. I need a little bit of help because I avoid the sun at all costs because I'm a vampire. But if we don't wanna commit to that, we have the Drunk Elephant Bronzy Drops. And these have been sold out pretty much the entire year thanks to Miss Alex Earl who put them on the map. So I'm just gonna like rub this on my face and then put my foundation on top of it. And these drops are just gonna give us like that sun-kissed look without having to damage our skin or commit to a self-tan. Now there's two foundations we're gonna be highlighting. This is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation and we also have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Both of these I have in fact seen literally everywhere, but I've never used them. Another trend this year was across multiple platforms, and it's to apply your foundation with basically anything other than what makes sense. And me personally, I love to participate in this. So today we're gonna be doing a spatula because that's what most of the girlies have tried at one point or another. And I guess I'm gonna do this half with my Charlotte Tilbury and this half with the Makeup by Mario. And we're just gonna compare them. Girl, why can't I open it? I have stuff all over my hands. Luckily, I have my Sydney Morgan makeup towel to help me open things, as well as remove my makeup seamlessly. Check it out on sydneymorgan.co if you want to. I'm gonna apply her on the spatula and then glide that onto the skin. So I definitely got a shade that's like a little bit lighter in the Makeup by Mario. And the Charlotte Tilbury is definitely more glowy. I guess it just depends on your preference. If you like something a little more matte and a little more full coverage, then the Makeup by Mario would be the move. But the Charlotte Tilbury, it's really light coverage, which I think I prefer, and a lot shinier and dewier. Like you can especially tell on my cheeks. Which one do you guys prefer? For concealer, we have our Kosas concealer, which was huge this year, but we're not only using that, we're also gonna incorporate some pink under our eyes because the pink concealer and pink under eye powder really came out of nowhere. And also we don't apply so much concealer like we used to back in 2016, but I'm just gonna mix in some of this Rare Beauty blush, which we're gonna be getting into a little bit later. And I've actually never tried pink under eyes. Maybe I did pink under eye powder at some point, but I never did pink concealer. And now with contour, as you can see here, we really want to look like supermodels, like Bella Hadid. We want to be snatched. We want to have cheekbones higher than your parents' expectations for you. So what she did was kind of like a little swoop like that, and then also on the jawline, but then leave it how it is right there. And then this video, I'm pretty sure everyone has seen. I did a video recreating this and reacting to it. There was a girl who was contouring her nose, and she basically pushed it up and then put contour where the crease was when she pushed it up. So you just wanna like look like a little Peppa Pig for a second and then just put a line right there. And I'm just gonna take my time blending that out because I don't wanna tear up my base. And I'm gonna lightly blend out the nose because I don't want the contour to move from where I just put it. And now the next step is to put blush literally everywhere. So the favorite blushes of the year are the Charlotte Tilbury Glow Wand, which these were sold out for a very long time as well. And also the Rare Beauty blushes. This is the one that I use every day. I love the Charlotte Tilbury one, but I usually mix this with something else anyways because it's not that pigmented or at least the one that I own is not. But the Rare Beauty, like literally, I could like blow that onto you and your whole face will be pink. This stuff, this is like very potent molten lava in here and you just wanna like 
Oh, that's it. Look okay, at the blush onto the nose too is super important. And I think that's enough for now. I'll probably go in with more blush a little bit later, but I don't want to get too out of control. 12 seconds later. Actually, I take it back. I'm a compulsive liar. I want to show you guys this stuff. PH activated beauty products kind of came out of nowhere, but you can put this on your cheeks, you can put this on your lips, and it will turn from green to pink. Put it on my cheek like this, and then it gets like pinker. I'll do the Euphoria one on the other side. It starts clear, and then when you put it on your face, it gets pinker. While I love the creativity, I don't fully think we need these pH activated products. And also, I don't know if I believe it. Does it not just turn the same shade of pink for everyone? You can also do it on your lips. That's like really bright. Let me know your thoughts. I don't know if we need them. Our base is all in place. Now we have to lock it in with some powder. In previous years, I would say we put powder everywhere. We don't do that anymore. Pretty much I will just powder my under eyes and maybe around my nose and maybe in between my eyebrows, but I'm pretty sparing with it. Also under our eyes, we don't only use transparent setting powder. We use pink under eye setting powder. Now the most popular one was the Huda Beauty under eye pink setting powder, which this was also basically sold out everywhere. And I ordered it online like two months ago and I don't know what happened. So we're gonna be using a Makeup Forever one. So this is like gonna be a pink under eye setting powder. So I'm just gonna take this and dab it just right below my eyes so that they don't crease and so I don't look too sweaty and greasy. This side looks so good. And we're not even like halfway done yet. I would say like the video right now because this is when it's gonna start to get questionable. In another moment that we can use to help us apply our powder are these triangle powder puffs. So we can also just dab that in there and then put it under our eyes. We also do a lot of tinting these days. We tint our brows, we tint our lashes, cheek tints, lip tints, lip liner tinting. So we tint lots of things. So my eyebrows are currently laminated. I have no idea the name of my laminating kit, but this is the one that I use on my brows like once a month. And it just helps them stand up because that fluffy brow look is the goal these days. When you're laminating your eyebrows, it's gonna be like, leave this on for eight to 12 minutes. First time I did it in my mind, I'm thinking it says eight to 12, but if I leave it on for 20, it will laminate them even better. If you leave it on for more than 12 minutes, it will burn your eyebrow hairs off and then you will be bald. You will look like Jeffree Star. You will look like an alien. And I don't want that for you. Make sure you're following the instructions to a T. They're not just a suggestion. You have to follow them. For our eyebrows today, we're gonna be using the NYX Cosmetics Zero to Brow. So this one claims to last for 48 hours straight and is basically everything proof. I put my back into that and it did last, but we don't want our brows super dark anymore. We don't want them to look like they were drawn in with a Sharpie. Just really natural and feathered out. So this is like a skin tint and when you put it on your eyebrow, you can let it sit for like two minutes and then it dries down and is good to go. And y'all remember the got to be glued hair gel that never washed out? They made an eyebrow gel. Got to be glued eyebrow gel. I keep this one in my personal makeup bag and I use it on a daily basis. Fake freckles also made a major comeback this year and I've attempted many methods of trying to apply them. So I'm gonna be using this little freckle pen. Just really going for that sun-kissed youthful look. For eyeshadow, we like to go super natural. We do some contour shades, some browns, and then maybe like a little shimmer, a little sparkle. We love to use an eyelash curler for as many hacks as possible. So what we're gonna do is put this eyelash curler right here and use Use that as kind of a guide as to where we should cut our crease and just use it like a stencil. We also use it for eyeliner. I'm just gonna set this side at the end of the eye. And instead of liquid liner this year, we've been loving just smoking out some brown shadow as eyeliner. And then just pull that across the eyelid. For the lids, I'm just gonna take the Urban Decay Moon Dust in the shade Space Cowboy. And I'm just gonna use my finger and just tap that on my eyelid. There was also hack going around where people were using the NYX jumbo eye pencil and putting it on inner corner, under eyebrow, cheeks, and on the nose as like highlighter. And then over top of that white inner corner, I'm gonna take more of our shimmer and just tap that on. Tap it on like there's no tomorrow. For our lashes today, we're gonna be using a combination of two things. Number one, the Kiss Falscara, which I did a full dedicated video to this. Basically, it's lash extensions at home, which we were big on lash extensions this year. So it comes with a bond and a sealant, which is like eyelash glue. And then you just put these on your eye and you can leave them for days, weeks. I don't know, however long it will last you. And the second product we're gonna be using is 
is absolutely wild. When I first saw it, I could not believe my eyes. And this is tubing mascara, which was a trend a few months ago, as you can see here. She literally just ripped mascara off her eyes like it was cat hair. Huh? So I'm gonna start out with some of the falscara. I haven't used this in a very long time. This was like more toward the beginning of 2023 where this was like fun and popping. So the first thing we do is brush on the bond to our eyelashes. And then you place the eyelashes underneath your actual eyelash. So like opposite of what you would usually do. And then you just place it on like that. And now I lock it in with the seal, which I don't entirely know what that means. I just did both sides with the Kiss Falscara. So now I'm gonna apply the tubing mascara on top of that just to really use every trend possible. Moving on to lips. So basically everyone and their mom came out with a lip oil this year. And I'm a lip oil connoisseur. I own them all. And also another funky thing that we've seen this year is oval lining your lips. We line them so that they look really circular and really juicy in the middle. And I'm using a Rare Beauty lip liner. And I really like that shape for the lips. I can see why it's so popular. Two of my favorite lip oils, I love the NYX Cosmetics Fat Oil, and I also love the Fenty Skin. I think I like lip oil so much because I feel like I'm also treating my lips throughout the day, like they just end up more hydrated than when I started versus if I wore like a crusty lipstick. As far as setting spray this year, there wasn't anything that groundbreaking other than the one size on Till Dawn. This is waterproof and also claims to last like 24 hours, and it should lock in any sort of possible makeup. Oh, wow, it's burning my eyes a little bit. Now, as far as hair goes this year, we've been loving a good sleek bun moment with like a hair wax stick or the complete opposite, a big luscious blowout. So my go-to style are curtain bangs, big blowout, lots of volume, and I invested in a Dyson Airwrap. I did it, I swallowed my pride and I bought one. And I had to follow so many tutorials when I had bought this item because I had no idea how to use it. And it comes with a lot of attachments, so it took some experimenting to figure out what I like. Here's a full face of the most popular beauty trends of 2023. Like this video right now, or Boots is gonna cast a spell on your entire family. I love these type of videos because it's always fun to go back and revisit and see what was considered stylish at the time. So I'm sure in a few years we're gonna come back and make fun of all the things that I did today. Bye guys!